that's very unique approach actually yes. that's the difference of transformation it start from the purpose so our starting point when we set our story we would like to find to redefine our mission our vision so our vision as a pharmaceutical company we would like to be a trusted partner that's the that's the beginning how to become the trusted partner we need to see what their expectation our customer expectation towards pharmaceutical company that's where it started yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And welcome to this new episode of the Agile Habits podcast. Today, I want to discuss the soft side of an Agile transformation. So there's two topics that I'm going to explore with today's guest, Kania. It's eternal transformation and changing people's behavior to support a transformation. So I call this the soft side, where most organizations, if they go on an Agile transformation, they look at things like structure, processes, technologies, or tools that they're using. And one of the aspects is people. I've seen that in the context of the Roche Global Transformation, there's a very big focus on supporting people's growth, people's behavior, learning, so that the transformation can succeed. Now, Kania has been instrumental in supporting this transformation from the people side, from the PNC chapter. So they have a chapter structure. I'm not sure if everybody's familiar with this, but it looks like circles. So there is no hierarchy, no formal hierarchy in the, the picture of the organization anymore. It's a circle. So one of those circles is the PNC, PNC chapter, which in most organizations would be called the HR department. So without further ado, I want uh, Kanya to introduce herself. So Kanya, welcome to my podcast. And I hope from here to introduce yourself yes. a little bit. Um, my name is Kanya. Um, people call me Kay. So I am an engineer. I spent um, five years in the beginning of my career as a sales in insurance company. So um, after that, starting 2004, I start my career in HR. So, um, as as an engineer, so I love numbers. So I'm I'm really a analytical person. So in HR, I start my career in compensation benefits. Mm. So along the way, going through um, sixteen years now in HR business with um, four different industries. So I've been working in mining, um, banking pharmaceutical company and insurance. So um, now landed in the pharmaceutical company with this transformation journey. And yeah. in the previous companies, was there any transformation going on as well? Or this is the first time you experienced it as it is? In the previous company, actually, they already implement Agile. Okay. Um, but not as strong as in my current company. In, car in my current company now, it's really worldwide, driven by global, and in the whole organization, not only one part of the business unit, but yeah. whole organization, everywhere. Yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Okay, thanks for the intro. So let's go into the main topic. So we've been discussing in, the, in our conversations the last few weeks about the hard side versus the soft side, right? So for me, the hard side of a transformation is leadership expecting things to go faster. So we have, for example, digital product or can also be a marketing tribe or squad and they have to reach certain numbers. So we want to get to those numbers faster or in a better way. That's the, for me, the, the, the hard part. You try to, to use Agile to drive outcomes. The soft side is much more about how do you equip people, how do you stimulate people to, to reach those outcomes faster or better, or to create even a different culture, or a happier work environment. So how do you see the hard side and the soft side, and especially the way this is done in your current organization? Okay. Uh... I do believe that HR is a mother in the organization. So the soft side is very important. Um, people is um, one a strong pillar mm. in, in this transformation journey. So at the beginning, we reform, we define our vision, we define our mission, and then we strongly believe in the people is is very important part in the organization. So. That's why HR shift to the name of PNC, which is people and culture. Yeah. 
Yeah, so you added yeah. this culture to this function. Yeah, yeah. we add the culture when, when we believe this culture not only belong to right. PNC, but belong to whole organization. So in the in this culture part, we, we define at the beginning our um, operational principle. Mm. In this operational principle, we set our value, how we do things, uh, how we how we define our behavior, our set of behavior that our fundamental to do things, yeah. um, to get things done. Um, yeah, that's that's the core. I think behavior is very important yeah. to to achieve um, to to make a difference and give impact to this transformation. Yeah, yeah, I find it interesting that you call it the mother because to me it's also this hard side is more male and then this soft mm -hmm. side is more the female side. So yeah. sometimes in other organizations I see that 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 female side is kind of lacking. Mm -hmm. What I also think is part of the transformation is is there's a very strong narrative. So everybody's talking about it. There's a lot of stories, experiences, guidance. Every every different country organization within the company you work for has its own portal. They share knowledge. So I, I think there is a very strong, yeah, I call it a narrative or story mm. because everybody smells and breathes this yeah. agile transformation. Yeah. That exactly that. The, the most important in transformation is the purpose. So without purpose, there is nothing binds us together. Yeah. So from that purpose, we set ourselves what we want to be look like in the future. Yeah. So we visualize that become our Indonesia story. So we kind of uh, set our future and let our people think what they want to do towards that future. Yes. So um, that's the beginning of the story. So we, we see people strength and weaknesses and uh, we look at our leadership skill and then we find out what kind of capability that we need in the future. So that's where we, that's where PNC come from to unlock. To unlock that, that, yeah, yeah. that potential. Yeah, what, what I also notice is that part of this, this purpose is going from a transaction oriented because pharma tr traditionally is very transaction oriented i'm selling medicine so i and i have a target and i try to sell as much as possible to a company that is really taking care of patients and saving people's lives essentially yeah so that's that's very unique approach actually yes. that's the difference of transformation it starts from the purpose so our starting point when we set our story, we would like to find to redefine our mission, our vision. So our vision as a pharmaceutical company, we would like to be a trusted partner. That's the that's the beginning. How to become the trusted partner? We need to see what their expectation, our customer expectation towards pharmaceutical company. That's where it started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. then everything coming after that afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, so you also have a lot of dialogues with, with uh, hospitals, with patients, mm -hmm. with, with the, the wider ecosystem to see how can you co-create. Co-creation is also some of one of those things that I think is quite unique in your transformation. Indeed. Yeah. That's uh, also one important element. We call it enterprise leadership. In the enterprise leadership, there is one factor, there is co-creation. So how people think about network and people think about collaboration. It's yeah. all about collaboration. Yes. And then it started from the mindset. Yeah. yeah, the mindset of the people to have that dialogue with externals to co-create yeah. things. So, yeah, so if we speak about PNC, so they, they, we have four pillars. First of all is about mindset. Uh, second is about our uh, knowledge. Yeah. And then what is capability there? And also the expertise and experience. In transformation, we call it experiment. Mm. So the starting pillar is the mindset itself. What kind of mindset that we need in, in our people to, to create different organization? It starts from the growth mindset. So definitely people with fixed mindset will not survive. And I, I think this is also interesting because in, in, in Agile, we talk a lot about, you know, practices and, and, and the Agile mindset. So this is the practices are the things you can execute, like it working in iterations or being a product owner. Mm -hmm. And then the mindset is more intangible. It's something that it's about culture, it's about behavior. So what have you from the PNC side done to make the behaviors that lead to a certain mindset, if that makes sense, to, to make that explicit? Yeah. 
Um, so um, in in the middle of our journey, we 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 collaborate together. Uh, come from the all employee who would like to have uh, our set of behavior. We we call it proud behavior. So it is set of behavior that we we want to have from the each of individual. Yeah, so it's like an acronym, right? Every every. It's kind of yeah. an acronym. Every um, letter PR means something. Is yes. there. And then uh, we connect that behavior, the how, into our performance management. So yeah. we measure the behavior into our performance. The, yeah. That's how we make it tangible. Yeah, yeah, and I think also feedback is a very instrumental element. In yeah, the how that we do uh, for this behavior is on the feedback. So we measure the through the feedback. Um, active feedback is also critical on uh, how we keep improving or de developing uh, toward um, the 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 different of the behavior that we would like to have yeah so feedback is very critical as well so we we, we did also in the people and culture which is we acknowledge that that is important so we 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 train people to how to yes. give and receive yes. feedback as well yeah, and that, that's what I think is really strong in the way you, you have supported the transformation that it like this proud is not something which is on the wall and nobody talks about it. Just that's our corporate values, but everybody talks about it. And it's also part of the performance review. It's we continuously talk and stimulate feedback so everybody understands what it means and can apply it to their own. Yes, yes, it is. Then, and it is also in our OKR. Yeah, we put it in our common goals. Yes. Uh, it is not only in PNC, it is everywhere. Yes, so we right. measure, we would like to, we set some criteria and some um, value to be achieved in, in uh, the whole organization towards this proud behavior. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, and yeah. That, that triggers me for my next question. You, the, the performance system, we did a sprint last week, we call it the, or last year, a sprint to redefine the performance management system, right? And for me, this is a very unique approach. So it's a, the, 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 the sprint in your context is a combination between the scrum sprint or a design sprint, in my opinion, it's kind of a mix. And what's unique in the setup is that you have a, a group of volunteers that essentially are empowered to recreate the building blocks of the organization. So we, we ran sprints for budgeting, for the performance management, for setting common goals. Yeah. Can you surely explain how, what's the setup and how do you organize this sprint? Yeah. First of all, I need to say thanks to you. It's <laughs> you there. <laughs> you help us. So, um, yes, it is coming from the, the organization. We, we, we invite uh, the team to join. Mm. It's not voluntold, it is volunteer. So we set three different groups. Uh, we need to set our common goals and we set our um, uh, design thinking and we set also one of it is the performance management itself. Yes. Performance management uh, in, that mom in that time I was the PO and then um, uh, my, my team was the PO and I'm, I'm the sponsor. And then in in yeah, that process in the, also challenge. In the sprint setup, there's like one or two, let's say, C-level sponsors. That, yes. Yeah. Yes. In, in every sprint, we have um, C-level as a sponsor, sponsor. And then the PO should be someone who understand what will be the outcome yeah. look like. So it's kind of a uh, very new thing that we need to ha deliver. Um, it's really different from what traditional HR, if I may say, in, in the performance mm. management. So how we combine the how uh, the, the behavior and the tangible outcome, which is the OKR itself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah and then and then in running a sprint, so we have the two, we have one or two sponsors. Then there's a group of volunteers. The sponsor, together with the PO from that volunteer team, defines the outcomes that they want from the sprint. And then yeah. they they we facilitate. I facilitated some of those sprints. Yeah. We have discussions, brainstorm, sticky notes on a jam board, and then yes. the outcome is a playbook. Right. That's, yes. Yeah. Yes. True. So we 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 keep iterate and see each other, and um. We collect some comment from the team. Where, where, where will be the the block and another discussion yes. come up? So it kind of like takes time, of course, in yeah, performance especially management. That, that sprint was very long. <laughs> yeah, this one is take times because yes. it is something new, and yes. we have to make sure that uh, people is um, buy it at the end in our for 
from our MVP. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, but I think it worked. And for me, this is this is uh, you know the the way this is implemented in the organization is quite unique because I've tried to introduce it in some of our other clients, mm -hmm. a similar concept. But obviously, normally it's it's you know if you change the performance management or the way you set goals. What most organizations do, they hire a consultant and they help to shape this and then top down we implement that change. But in this case, you make the people that are going to be affected by it co-owner of how you yeah. reshape this. It's, it's really a unique approach. Yeah, I think it's it's because of the mindset. So yes. we would like to try something new and yes. live with it. And, and afterwards we can, uh, retrospective on that, maybe we can change again. So yeah, it's... Yeah. Keep yeah, changing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, yeah, and, and that's mindset also is open. Mindset is open. So people are open for change and keep looking for um, retrospective moments. So we keep looking for feedback, whether we need to change anything. So. Yeah, even after the formal implementation of the yes. new performance system, we're still trying to change it or improve it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, even when we sell to, to global as well, to other affiliate, we open for, for the feedback from them. So maybe we need to change anything. We need to redefine again. So yeah, it, it works. Yeah, and, and, and that brings me to the other topic. I was listening to a podcast of Bill Anderson, your, your global CEO a few weeks ago. And I think yeah, that, that inspired me a lot because what, what basically happens is the leadership, for example, Bill, he used an example for um, the budgeting. So what he said is that we for, for, for years, we've been trying to change the budgeting cycle. And we realized that with incremental change, it didn't work. And what he then did is he said, okay, we, do, we don't do budgeting anymore. Mm -hmm. But he also didn't give the answer to what's next. So there are, and the same is happening. I heard it two years ago in, in the Malaysian office. There is, there is no more sales targets. Mm -hmm. So those mm -hmm. things are quite radical. And I think it's audacious. And how, how does that affect you as a leader? Because it's like they make a decision, no more budget, no more sales targets. Mm -hmm. And then there's empty space, but because there is no story on what's next, how do we implement this? What are the solutions? How, do, how does it affect you? How do you see this? Yeah, we always see from first. First of all, we, we, we always see what what is the outcome. So outcome based thinking is more important for us. So if it is good for our patients, so we will do it. So, of course, at the beginning, it's something radical that you just to mention that it's Okay, so we'll see what happened in, in right. our organization. Do, 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 we, do we want to do it in Indonesia? But we don't know, right? So mm. we, we, we now in the process of um, in this journey together. So yes, um, we follow the global guidance. And then I think it's everywhere in the, in the affiliate as well. So we learn from each other. Yeah. So it's kind of challenge, mainly in the, in the talent. Yeah, how we prepare the talent towards this model. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's your angle to it. Yeah, so yeah. that so that that's also an interesting part because where where they say this changes that, that there is guidance and there is then a lot of sharing from global, which we call the network, I believe. So there's different o country organizations that, for example, in Malaysia, they have already experimented with no sales target, so we can learn from them how to implement this. So I think that that sort of network structure to support. The change in the different countries is also quite a unique approach. Yeah, yeah. Um, because we think also that um, telling, selling will be no longer works. Yes. Because people need to understand the essential of the um, treatment life cycle. Yes. So the, the, the target is to give, to educate of, to kind of like become a partner to the yeah. customer, to let them know how it's the treatment look like, where you can save there. So at the end, we help people to decide themselves to make decision. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You yeah. facilitate that. Yeah. Yes. I think the other aspect that is, that triggered me in Malaysia was this, the, the, I think the former sales director said that if my salespeople need a target to be motivated to sell what we are selling, which is basically saving lives, something is wrong. So he believes there is an intrinsic motivation in people to yeah, to save lives, to help other yeah, people. So yeah. why do we need a so, sales target? So yeah. that's why pa we have to have people who are very passionate yes. to help patients. Yeah, exactly. So you yeah. need, yes, yes. Not that's people who one. function by just make my Not numbers. Achieve, achieve, selling, yes. telling, but we need someone who is very passionate to help the patient. Yeah, yeah. which again uh, comes back to the soft side of yes. the people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so 
what are some of the challenges that you see in the transformation? Yeah. Uh, for you personally, for the organization? Interesting question. <laughs> so, um, challenge, um, of course, uh, doing something new, ch the, ch the change in the organization, it's very challenging. So, um, for myself, I see as a, as a leader, as an employee, as one of the team of people and culture, my challenge is to set my priority. Juggling with priority, it's is the top challenge for me. Yeah. So um, for everyone, I think. <laughs> I think it's for everyone yeah. as well. So we try to understand what it is, uh, reading some literatures, and then also doing in the very short timeline, only yeah. three months, only only ninety days, which is uh, previously it is not like that. Mm. So uh, this juggling with priority, I keep learning on how to make sure that I am doing something very important to organization and let go something that rest. I used yes. to do. Yes. Let go of the rest. How to, you also teach me how to stop, how to delay and how to delegate. Yeah. Otherwise I cannot focus to, to my outcomes. Yeah. So that's the challenge uh, I feel as a person, as a leader. And the other part, as people and culture uh, team, I can see the challenge is to how to attract and retain talent. Yeah. Because the talent that we look for now, it's not only about their expertise, no longer, no mm. longer anymore. It is also about the mindset, which is um, how to keep people in the organization still motivated toward this change yeah. and and how to attract people from other other industry or other organization. And so how, how do you, like, what do you, what kind of things do you look for if you talk about attracting new talent? Yeah, we keep finding uh, what is going to best uh, in recruitment. So yeah, at the beginning, I can see that this is, this is quite the, uh, the things that I'm obliging to improve in, in current organization. But then we we collaborate together, we discuss, we have small team in discussion, and finally we decide to hire for mindset. So But what does that mean? Like what are if I if I'm if I'm an applicant, do I think about applying? Yeah. So what, what my what mindset? Yeah. So um, we look for someone who have passion. Passion, yeah. And we look for someone who have um, growth mindset. Yeah. So the person who really curious and want to learn new things. Yeah, can do mentality. Can do mentality. So the skill that they will think that promotional is no longer the hierarchical. Yes. Become senior manager. Th that's not there anymore, right? That's not yeah. there anymore because we are very lean. Yes. So the promotion from them in career path in this organization is how to gain new skill. Yeah, so it's more like See wider. See more to versatile yeah. going here and there. So you want to learn something new from uh, this, learn new skill from other roles yes. or other function. So that kind of mentality and mindset that we look for. Okay. okay. So yeah. expertise also, people have to have the core expertise in that job, but uh, experience, experience is more important. Yeah. Yeah, because I think one of the one of the ways people one of the ways it functions right now is you have common goals or so OKRs and people can find out where can I contribute, right? So the, we I'm not within my role. I'm not in my box only, but I can see can I help, for example, P and C yeah. chapter or the finance chapter to contribute. Yeah, that's also one thing that we encourage people every day. So if you come to a set of meeting, let's say. Uh, virtually or, or directly, don't use your head, don't use your role. Yes. You are not there as a person in yes. your role. Yes. You have to see everything from different angle. Yeah. So the skill that you have is very helpful um, to perform your job. Yeah, but reach yeah. out and try new stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah reach out. And, and how, how, how easy is it to find people that can do that? That's the challenge. That's the challenge, yeah. <laughs> I'm always surprised That's by that challenge. because, yeah. Yeah, that's the challenge because in, I think um, that's why because not every industry implement this agile organization yet. So um, it kind of surprised from the talent why it's like this. Yeah. So we need to explain uh, what will be the benefit for them 
uh, in this kind of HR organization set up. Yeah. Yeah. So what what's the answer? Obviously, possibilities that you just described. You know, yeah. You work on many things. What yeah, else? Yeah, we will actively open the possibility for people to grow. Not only in local Indonesia, maybe if mm. they want to want to have exposure more in other countries because we work as a network. Yeah, so they are still based out of Indonesia, but yes. they can collaborate with other countries. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. we capitalize network, yeah, which learn is, from yeah. other. Yeah. What else? Yeah. Co-creation, collaborate. So as long as we understand we want to, what we would like to have, then we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We can ask people from other countries yes. and what they did and maybe learn from there sharing stories, sharing best practice, so we can do it in in, uh, in our project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that this, this story of how Agile functions within your organization could be even carried out more to the outside. We, we, we've had the discussion before, but I think that it's it's quite unique. And if you would show sort of people how, how does this, is this working within the organization, it would attract talent that have that mindset more because they don't, you don't expect this kind of environment in a large, hundred what is it, hundred twenty year old company yeah, with a hundred more than a hundred thousand employees yes. worldwide. You don't expect that this functions this way. You would think, oh, I want to go to a startup, but you want people that think I want to go for a startup to actually yeah. join you. So personally, oh, I think these agile methodologies at the agile organization will help the company to move faster. It's I work for, I, as, as I mentioned, I work for different industry and in the traditional way of industry look like, it's kind of like uh, they don't think about the customer. Right. They think about themselves, yes. how they can give to the customer, but yes. uh, we don't know whether the customer li- like it or need it or not. So we work for them. Yeah. But it's in the other way around. Yeah. Uh, so the speed is faster. So. So we don't need to reinvent ourselves. We don't need to do the consensus on, on every decision. It is empowerment. So we let people also give their innovative thinking and share their ideas. So it's, it's really amazingly helpful to, to create mm. something new. And it, it is faster. It doesn't need to come from the upper level. Sometimes it's come from the people in the field. Yeah, exactly. Because they yeah, know, they understand. Yes. They you trust understand. them and yes, you give them space. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It okay. So I think we gave enough reasons to become for people to become curious to have a, a chat with yes. you. So before we close, I have one more thing that I want to discuss. We've discussed transformation as a project with a beginning and an end versus sort of eternal transformation. And the way I see the current transformation in your company is there is no end. It will keep going. And they have phases. I think they call it horizon one and two or three right now. But I think in five years they will still have some new horizon because it's eternal change. And I think that's also the future of organizations. Mm-hmm. It's not we transform and then we're done, but it will keep changing all the time. So how do you see that? So um, I joined in this current company since uh, two years ago, more than two years ago. And I can see this, the transformation keep consistent and keep yes. going on. And yes, growing and, and getting growing more. And, yeah. and growing, we, we, we keep doing the new things. And then, yes, it will not stop. It will continue because we would like to have everything even better. Yes. Yeah, it's we, we see everything based on 90 days. So yes, there, there's the first horizon, second horizon, the third horizon. It will keep going. So that's where people and country is very important to keep people motivated, open for changing, offer for in, improvement. So Yeah, you need people who embrace change, not afraid of it because there's no status quo anymore. Yes. Yeah to leverage that kind of thinking and mindset. Yeah, it's okay. It's continuing going. Okay, so if people want to reach out to you to have a chat, how can they reach out? Email, WhatsApp, Email, LinkedIn. Email, WhatsApp, LinkedIn. We Instagram, can. no? Yeah, I have. Yeah, Instagram, <laughs> okay. So maybe you should give your Instagram account. Sure. Okay. What is it, Kanya and then? Kanya Mustikasari. Okay. <laughs> okay. So thanks for this interview. Thanks for no listening. Worries. And Thank please you. feel free to reach out to me or to Kanya if you have any questions related to the discussion we had, or if you want to join Kanya's team, feel free to reach out. And I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Thanks.